Crossroads Media. Yo! Ew, that was gross. Hey, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button as well as there's a fly in here. Fuck off. If you are interested in, in taking me on the road with you, you can go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and search Sports Talk with Broads, and you can leave a five-star rating and a review. It will mean the absolute world to me. Thank you guys all so much for the crazy support. I love you all to death. Enjoy the show. It's crazy how fast things change, huh? Disaster to beautiful within nine seconds. That ninth inning happened with the snap of your fucking fingers, did it not? Here's Bryce. Here's Boom. Bryce goes to third. Here's Stott. Nick with his fourth hit of the day. His second double. Wow. Down the right field line. Suarez sucks. Can't even get one out. And thank you, Kyle Schwarber, for setting the tone in the eighth inning. Because without that bomb, we don't even have that fight. We probably do. <laughs> we probably do. We probably do. But it's a lot easier to go into that ninth. Only down one run compared to two. So your home run hitter comes up large in the eighth. And this was a game that was annoying as hell. Nick Castellanos was doing everything in his power to try and give you a chance to score offensively. Here's a double. Here's a single. Right? I mean, he had two singles, two doubles, and he was constantly getting on base. Can somebody behind Marsh or even Marsh help out? He did that once, but after that, him, Stubbs, Pache, I wanted to rip my hair out. Now Trey Turner has a chance, and you're telling me San Diego, that That ball continues to carry and keeps going to deep center field. And when Trey let one go off the bat, I'm thinking, here we go. Oh, what? It died. Why does that one die? Bryce had a chance right after that. Nothing. So, so many guys left on the bases. But the Phils deserved to win. Aaron Nola deserved better, too. It was not right for him to pitch that gem and then, you know, have that one little issue where, like I mentioned, the ball kept carrying, then it's 3-1. to He let one walk kill him. He had one walk all game long. He ends up with the quality start. I'm not crushing him. If you thought at all, that when this game was playing out and they were down 3-1, that I was going to sit here afterwards and rip Nola, then you're on drugs. My cousin was tweeting out, this is why Nola isn't it. And then I saw three more tweets, not from him, but on my timeline following him, going something similar. He's too weak. He doesn't have the makeup. What do you want the guy to do? He was perfect through what? Maybe four or so? And then he had an inning where he walked a guy and then, you know, it is what it is. But if you talked post game, hypothetically speaking, if they lost 3-1 and that ninth didn't happen, your takeaway was Aaron Nola? Because my takeaway was we need to get a timely hit. We kept putting traffic on. Let's go. The fourth inning, what was it? A six-hour inning? Michael King on the bump through what? 97 pitches in the fourth? You come out of it with only one run? You only crossed home plate one time? That's unacceptable. So that was the issue. But the fact that You steal it late, even though I think you were the better team for majority of the action. You did steal it from San Diego late. You win the series, and now you have a chance to sweep after, you know, the road trip. So I think that that's extremely important for the vibes. And by the way, Nicholas! Nicholas! I'm telling you, it's in there. 
I know it's annoying. I know it bothers us. I get the money. I know what he's done since being here. You don't have to tell me. I've experienced it all with you all. But there's something in Nick. I don't know what it takes to get it out on a consistent basis. Maybe it's Liam throwing him batting practice prior to the game. And he's taking hacks with his son. I don't know what it is. But I'm not done believing in the Castellanos experience yet. I'm getting sucked in, but he's smacking doubles around like it's nothing right now. He's producing that shitty series in Baltimore sandwiched in between the good play is not, it's not how bad he played. But if you can get him into this back end of the batting order role for whatever reason, I think there's something to it. Hey, bullpen. Kirkery. Hey, how are you? Right? Matt Strom. Hey, how are you? Jeff Hoffman. Who's your daddy? What's he do? He don't stand a chance. Okay? Especially with all those people sitting in the heat, going nuts, bringing the juice, bringing the energy. You, you, you don't stand a chance, okay? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. The Phils at home is a different type of beast. Hey, Stott! <laughs> he had two. Multi-hit day. Going the other way with it in the ninth. I stayed locked in. Probably should have had three hits. Because he got robbed with a laser and a beautiful flash of the leather that robbed a hit from him early. And I thought, ah, damn it, what does this guy got to do to buy one? Sometimes you could be in such a funk. This game could be disgusting. It could be nasty. It could do dirty things to you. You just need one to get off the schneid, if you will. And he ropes one. He gets robbed. It's tough. Chai, I got some more at-bats. It's okay. I believe in myself. I'm going to step up tonight, damn it. And that's what Bryson Stott does. As I look to my left, I'm watching Kyle Schwarber and his home run on replay, uh, re, on repeat, repeat. I was going to say something else, chef's kiss. I was getting excited to talk about a chef's kiss, but I don't know why that combined with the, the repeat. It doesn't make any sense. What doesn't make sense is how great this team can be when they put it together. Do not forget how quickly you took over this game. Seconds! That matters to me. It's not beat around the bush. We're not going down in 1-1 one, one and, and having them tie this series up. It ain't happening. Now, here's the audio from Tom McCarthy on Nick Castellanos and that beautiful, beautiful walk-off. Nick Castellanos has the biggest ball sack ever. Now, he didn't say that, but if he did, <laughs> that would be something. Here's the actual call. And now Castellanos swinging a fly ball down the right field line. On the run is Tatis. He can't get it. It's a fair ball. The Phillies will win the game here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Nick Castellanos gives the Phillies their fifth walk-off win of the year. Nick Castellanos has the biggest ball sack ever. They win it four to three, and they're mobbing him at second base. Well, it's been a very frustrating night for with runners in scoring position, but the Phil's able to string four hits in a row together to come out on top. There's just no quit in this ball club. And a four-hit night for Nick Castellanos. Nick Nicky! It feels good being a believer. It feels good giving him the love when he deserves to give the love. So when things like this happen, it's like I've, I've been there the whole way with you, baby. I got you. Thompson said they kept staying after it. They kept staying after it. 
Nick with a walk-off tonight. Happy for him, as he should be. I'm telling you, there's something right now in the Nick Castellanos bat. I just pray to the world that we can find real, legitimate, day-to-day hot Nick Castellanos, please. Did anybody think Fernando Tatis Jr. was going to make the sliding grab by the foul the foul line in right field? I actually thought that it might go foul. I thought it would be one of those things where, did the chalk kick up? Did we see any white fly up? Oh, man, there's a little bit of dirt when we see the replay in the replay booth on a, one of those super slow-mos where it was just foul. But no, it stayed in there. It's outrageous. All right, let's take some anytime online calls, huh? Let's do it. <laughs> Bro, I'm fucking juiced right now, man. Like, oh, fuck. Oh, man, that was great. I mean, no, not Nola's best stuff, but way better than his last outing. You know, he did just enough, right? Fucking, oh, the boys come through in the bottom of the night. And I, I, I just love the approach. Bryce, you knew when Bryce Harper got up to that plate, he got on first. No shot he's stopping that second on that bone. No fucking shot. Oh, man, I, nah, I just love it. Just what did it go? Just passing the torch, right? Everybody come up, just fucking find a pitch and just hit it. I love it. I just love I, – uh, it's one of those games, right? It starts off, you're like, oh, shit, here we go. They score a billion runs the day before, and now we can't get shit. And it, 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 it kind of sucks life out of you. Then a uh, bottom of the night like that, man. It just pumps me right back up, bro. Oh, man. Great, great win by the Phils. I love them gutting it out. Oh, fucking love it. And how about fucking Nikki C? Four for five tonight? Holy shit, man. Oh, I love I love this team. I love it, bro. I love this team. Go Phils. I'm right there with you, man. You're right. The electricity of a walk-off win is so sick, especially in the manner that they did it. And you're totally right talking about Bryce. Not only is it about when he got on, but I think once he touched third base and went first to third, that was an intensity kick. It really was. That was a statement to the team. That was a statement to the clubhouse. When you look down at the dugout, when you're over at third base, knowing that you ran with that piss and vinegar and that energy to get Get that extra bag. Look, sometimes it hurts you, and sometimes we wonder why he's so uber aggressive and why he's trying to take the extra mile, and sometimes it shoots you in the foot. But majority of the time, it doesn't. Majority of the time, it gives you the advantage because Bryce plays with that attitude, and that was a statement that changed the trajectory of the game. First and third, no outs. Essentially an automatic tie. You're going to tie this game up. You're going to tie this game up. And everybody knew in that field in a San Diego Padres uniform. that oh, All right, at the minimum, we're going to extras here. It's already written down. If it's first and second, no outs. Hey, there's still a chance here, boys. Hey, listen, maybe we can get the lead runner. Maybe we can turn two with a traditional double play or something along those lines. And then from there, maybe someone's on third base but there's two outs, and we only got to focus on one guy. No, no. First or third, Bryce Harper was a game changer. And when he does take that extra step and push that that little uncomfortable zone we have sometimes with the 50-50 decisions, it works out more than it pains you. And I just want everybody to realize this was a night where you give two thumbs up and you know that his switch mentally running the bases there, huge, huge. It is pretty wild, though, how much things would have changed. I mean, if, if, if that nine played out differently, we would have been so mad. Oh, my God. This offense sucks. Ironic how Nick, of all people, was the one to actually show up. But what are we doing? Trey and Bryce had a chance and couldn't, right? It, it's, it's just so different. And it happened so quickly. I wasn't even prepared for it. I was, but I wasn't. It just happened. It's not one of those ninth innings 
where it drags on. There's a walk, a full count, a leadoff walk, and then there's a battle with another full count, and then that person works a nine-pitch at-bat. Someone's now on second base. Now we get a mound visit. Now we see, are they going to bring in a different reliever at some point after, you know, they make certain decisions? The whole thing, right? I mean, if it's, it could play out like the fourth inning did. The pitcher throw went 28, 29 pitches. Where are they at? What are they thinking? This thing was like, boom, 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 And then all we hear is this on the broadcast. Nick Castellanos has the biggest ball sack ever. I love this team, too. I love this team, too. Let's go to Zach in Baltimore. Big dick Nick, baby. All right, play my soundboard sound right now, bro. Nick Castellanos has the biggest <laughs> ball sack ever. I mean, this guy's thrown under the bus by all Philly fans. <laughs> Rightly so, after a horrid series in Baltimore. He says, fuck you. I'm Nicky Two Bags. I'm just hitting doubles all fucking game. All right? Dottie and Morse with a couple hits and both got an RBI. I mean, this team just has that it factor, man. I know, bummed out about the couple of series that have happened here, but when it comes time to play in Philadelphia and you're down by a run, and you need to win a team for your game, or win, win a game for your team, these guys step up, all right? And it doesn't matter who. It could be Nick. It could be Bryson. It could be Marsh. It could be anybody on this team. We'll probably accept Garrett Stubbs. But, you know, let's not take let's not take unfair shots at people here. Peace out. Go, Phil. Yeah, come on, Zach. You didn't have to hit Stubby below the belt like that. Nicky Tubags! Nicky Tubags! He was Nicky Tubags for a while last season. He had 75,000 doubles, it felt, in a short amount of time last season. Double, 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 double. Maybe there's something to it. Now, Topper also mentioned what the problem was with Nick in Baltimore compared to what we've seen over the recent solid swings in the box and it basically came down to he thought when he was in Baltimore that he was just starting to chase a little bit more but now that he's doing what he's been doing when it has been good it's it's more just focusing on not chasing so much so maybe he was applying too much pressure on himself in Baltimore maybe it was hey we're down a lot of guys I'm batting too and I really need to step up for my team instead of just letting the game happen natural for him he just seems to be someone that less is more so whether he's batting two whether it's batting four I don't know what it is but it just seems like whenever he's so insanely focused on outside stuff other than just see ball, hit ball, just let the game naturally come to him in the box. That's when he thrives. So I think he was overdoing it, overcomplicating, and and trying to do too much with every swing in Baltimore, trying to be the guy. And instead here, instead of trying to be the guy, he became the guy because the game just happened. He just played. He just went out there and did his thing without overcomplicating every swing. And you see what happens when that's the case. So just Stop thinking, Nick. That's all. I just don't need you to think anymore. Just don't think. Step in the box and don't think. Don't think. Now, our first call mentioned Knowles. Did Zach mention Knowles? I don't know if he did or not. For some reason, I don't remember him mentioning Knowles. But the first call did. And, you know, he said, like, not his best stuff. I, I, I don't think it's as bad. It only felt worse because the offense stunk. Three run, the, the pitching staff in this game allowed three runs. If you head into a home game at Citizens Bank Park allowing three runs in nine innings, I think you should fucking win that game. And you should have a good chance to win that game. I just don't think it's as bad as it felt. It felt worse because they were stranding guys nonstop because we were looking for the big hit. You're up one nothing. One nothing. One nil as the soccer people say. Go union. I, I I haven't watched a Union game since the year they blew it when they were up a man and, and they were almost ready to go win a championship. And that was the only game I watched. So 
whatever. But it's one nothing though. And then you see a walk and you see a home run and then they tack on that third. I think that third run felt insane too. If it was 2-1 and, you know, that ball carried, I I think the general vibe surrounding Aaron Nola is a little different. But once again, I thought Aaron Nola pitched fine. I think he pitched fine. It's hard to get mad at a quality start. If my starters are giving me quality starts and we know what this bullpen is capable of, I can't really rip them. I don't know. I just think sometimes the overall reaction to a starter is very all over the place for us right now. We're in a very awkward spot as a fan base for whatever reason. All right, let's go to Sam. Play that fucking audio, bro. What has Nick Castellanos got? What has he fucking got? You tell me. Hey, great fucking game from Aaron Nola. Great game from Cassie. Great game from Trey. We up, baby. We fucking up. And all we had to do was come home. And the National League runs through Philadelphia. Ain't no fucking buddy beating our asses in CBT. Let's fucking go, Phil. Nick Castellanos has the biggest ball sack ever. You guys are on fire tonight, baby. You guys are on fire tonight. I love it. Everyone wants to play the audio, huh? I guess we might have to bring this thing back. It's been quite some time. I haven't actually used my sound bites in a while. I don't really even know what else is on here because it's been that long. Fire it all cylinders! Fairways! Fairways! A pump! All right. What was he in there? Pump him? Was it pump him? Fire it all cylinders! Fairways! Fairways! I'm pumped! I'm pumped, he said. I'm pumped. Bend him over! Oh, yeah, that's right. Holy hell! Bend him over! Holy hell! Bend him over! I can't wait for the playoffs. Oh, my God! I can't wait for the playoffs. Oh, man. I got to settle down a little bit here. Caffeine's rolling through my body. It's 10 o'clock at night. I got an early wake up. But how am I supposed to fall asleep when something like that happens? Here's the answer. I don't. I don't. Nick Castellanos highlights. On repeat, Nick Castellanos prior to the Baltimore series where we got some doubles. Yeah, I'll throw that into the brain a few times as well. I'll probably look up last year's playoffs when he was red hot. I'll throw those games into the mix. I'm going to go on a Castellanos run here and consume his greatness. I might even throw it back to his year in Cincinnati prior to hitting free agency. I am about to consume. A sickening amount of Nick Castellanos highlights right before the 1 o'clock game. I got from now until 1 o'clock on Wednesday. And then they have an off day on Thursday. So depending how that game goes, if it's another beauty from Nicky Two Bags, then it could be a solid 48 hour. And then even all day Friday until 640 when they play Arizona. Oh, my toes just curled the second I saw Arizona on the calendar. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. Anyway, can't wait to consume this Nick Castellano stuff. Let's take another one. When we think this team is going to lose, they they just do the exact opposite. They just don't lose. And I know before in the middle of the game, we were ridiculed and saying, damn, Turner had the bases loaded, couldn't get anything going. Damn, there's some more runners stranded. One with one for six with the with guys in scoring position. Uh oh, this doesn't look like this is going to be our night, especially after the home run given up by Nola. But Schwarber, I think Schwarber woke up the crowd, definitely got them going, and I am laughing my ass off that Tatis could not make that play. That was the funniest shit I've ever seen this whole season, and hell of a hell of a job by Castellanos tonight. Go Phils. 
I probably have seen some things funnier, but it's nice to know that that thing blooped right in there and snuck in. Snuck in. And all jokes aside, it is such a quality trait to have to know that in the middle of the game, when your team is down in the dumps because, well, it hasn't really gone your way, and you're constantly having the other team essentially play with fire, but you can't burn them down, it has to be crushing. It has to be killing your entire vibes. What do we got to do? Now, I'd imagine that they absorb Rob Thompson's message, I think, his personality. The more you're on base, you're going to eventually let it crack, right? You're, the other team's going to crack because you're too talented. Look at this lineup one through nine. Look at how special you are. Look what this offense can be. So maybe they soak that in like a sponge and they're never doubting themselves because they believe in that. And quite frankly, they should believe in that. So maybe they don't ever feel down in the dumps, even if it's in a night where through four or five or six innings that they maybe should have three or four runs instead of only one. And that would be what makes this team great. But I'd have to imagine, just because we're human, you know, you know that sometimes these nights happen. And maybe through seven, you're thinking in the back of your mind, it might particularly be one of those, I don't know that one, this might be one of those nights. And doubt creeps in. Ah, we got six outs to go. Ah, four outs to go. I, I don't know. But you're right, when Kyle launched one, well, then everybody knows, all right, this just got a little bit easier. All right, now we're talking. All right, Schwartz, greatest leadoff hitter to ever exist in the history of ever. (laughs) That's why he bats leadoff, by the way. I want him to see more at-bats. I want him to get up there more. Because of that. All right. We'll wrap things up here. Quick turnaround. Love you guys to death. Appreciate it. Catch you on the next one.